Starting a new life in a new country takes a lot of work. Finding a job is already complicated. Now, throw in culture shock and still learning the intricacies of communication. For newcomer youth looking to develop their skills and find opportunities in an industry they're interested in, Manitoba Start's Work Start Youth Work Experience Program is a great tool to take advantage of. Let's get into it. My name is Yelena Kalupar. I have been working with Manitoba Start for over four years. I started to work as a career coach for three and a half years, and um, I was promoted to supervisor role with another department. And I absolutely love his job. It's a fun organization to work. It's very interesting job, very rewarding job. And I love our clients. I love our employers. And I'm happy to be here. My name is Jerry Lynn. You can call me Jerry. So I am a um, certified uh, career coach and uh, workshop facilitator. Uh, I started uh, way back in 2014. I started a role at Intake. And then I was moved to the career services and became also the supervisor of intake services. But I went back to uh, career services because this is the love of my heart. I like to interact with uh, clients. So the big question is, as you're talking about the work that you're doing at Manitoba Start, what is Manitoba Start? Well, I, I joined them in 2014, but as far as I know, it started uh, way back in 2010 as a not-for-profit organization uh, that uh, connects business to a world-class uh, workforce. And it is now the leading provider for career services for newcomers and uh, to the province. And we address um, this employer's recruitment needs by matching the unique skill set of qualified, the job-ready newcomers with employer specific uh, job requirements. And we have a charitable status and funded by the government of Canada and government of Manitoba. So we receive core funding from the labor and immigration and all newcomer and staffing services are offered at no charge. Yeah, that's one thing that maybe people living here in Canada might not be thinking about when people are immigrating here to the country, sort of the challenges that might come, whether it's transitioning to a new job or trying to find a position within the experience you already have. I think I can add a little bit about Manitoba Start. So we have uh, three different departments. The first department is called Intake Department, where all Clients are registered first, so intake advisors, they check the documents, they put all information in a database, and after they move to career services, where clients can meet with uh, career coaches like Jerry, uh, and career coaches can review the resumes, cover letters, they can do work search, career planning. We also have various workshops like interview skills workshops, for example, and qualification recognition workshops. And when clients are ready and they have their targeted resumes, they're coming to us, they're coming to my department. So my department called Job Matching Unit and uh, my team building a good relationship and partnership with different companies in Manitoba. And we referring clients to companies. We're sending their resumes to right person, I can say. So it simplify everything. We, we have great relationship with uh, employers and also it's free for employers as well. We can save their time, we can save their money, we can pre-screen candidates, we can collect their resumes and uh, we can do also hiring events and information sessions. So, so it's a very um, broad approach encompassing a whole variety of areas. This month, there's a career development workshop, have fast track to work search for Ukrainians and uh, most recently, the Work Start Youth Work Experience Program. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? So Work Start Program, it's a special program. It's a unique program. It's only for immigrant youth, and it provides immigrant youth with eight weeks of paid work experience in a various roles that are much their previous work experience, background and skills and education. It's free for the employers. It's an eight weeks program free for the employers. And um, there are two components in this program. One component 
it's a work experience with host organization. So client will go to the host organization and will work there free of charge to the employer, 31.5 hours a week. And it will be training every Friday, online training at Manitoba Start 3.5 hours. So 35 hours overall, eight weeks training. It's a great program. Employers like this program. Our clients like this program. Eligibility criteria for this program. Clients should be between 18 years old and 30 years old, have permanent resident card, not receive employment insurance in last five years and have not received funding supports from other programs. Many of our clients who are coming to Canada, they have regulated occupations. For them, it's a huge challenge. For them, it's very, very hard to not even get a job, kind of uh, start to work in the field. For example, if person work as a nurse back home, we try to match this person and place this person as a support worker, as a direct support worker, healthcare aid. If person was working as an accountant back home, we can find a job as an accounting clerk, bookkeeper. And uh, it's a win-win situation for both parties. Employers very like this program. They calling us, they sending us emails. Can you send us work start clients? Can you send us work start clients? They really like this program because they can save some money on the training. They can try clients, they can test them, they can coach them, mentor them, save money. And for clients, it's also great benefits because they can get Canadian workplace culture. Uh, sorry, they, they, they can get Canadian work experience. They can learn Canadian workplace culture. They can extend their network. They can develop references. They can improve their soft skills the technical skills and get job after the placement success of this program is really good it's over 80 really percent of clients will yeah. employed by companies after completion of the program yeah. well that's one of the challenges that we hear sometimes of someone who comes mm -hmm. over and you know they they struggle to find a job where like maybe they were much more experienced back home and then they come here and then they have to work at a mcdonald's or another kind of like um minimum wage occupation yeah exactly and uh, we have great outcomes in this year many our clients got amazing jobs uh, one client got a bilingual accounting care position software developer um, laboratory assistant medical assistant uh, accounting technician so really really great positions and comp company kept them they say, and I usually, I'm a person who is communicating with employers and by the end of the week, eight, I'm asking them, okay, this is the last week of the placement. Are you going to keep the yeah. client or do you want to let client go? I say, oh no, we are going to keep it. It's great. And usually they extend more hours and they pay higher salary. You talked a little bit about learning about Canadian workplace culture. Uh, Jer Jerry, maybe you can talk on this a little bit, what are some of those things like those culture shock when coming into, for non-Canadians, what is that? Or I guess from the outside perspective, what is Canadian workplace culture? And what are some other things that people are learning or developing skill sets of through this eight week program? As a newcomer, even me myself, uh, when I was still new here, I would have uh, like challenges in terms of the communication and in terms of the language and uh, the culture itself, like the inside uh, uh, norms, and uh, they, they look different to me, the way I was used to doing. So this is exactly the experience of uh, newcomer clients that we have right now. That's why we have developed uh, this uh, workshop uh, for them to be able to um, develop these uh, workplace skills and identify potential gaps as well in their performance. And with that, uh, they can acquire the necessary skills for a successful uh, workplace integration. In the workshop, they learn to um, learn the communi communication style in the workplace, which is one important thing because uh, for uh, like, for example, if a, someone comes from a different country and their communication style is it's more like, <clears throat> like a suburb kind of, they cannot take the initiative to speak if uh, they're just the staff 
over their boss, right? So, but here, uh, initiative is important. So we, they learn from this workshop how to take initiative and how to properly communicate uh, with uh, colleagues, uh, supervisor, other um, staff in the, in the organization. So we tackle about effective communication. So what is effective communication? And there's uh, where we also uh, talk about the elements, like the verbal, the paraverbal, and the nonverbal. And as we have learned, a nonverbal is the most effective, right? The retention rate is more on the nonverbal. And uh, some people like uh, maintaining eye contact. For some newcomers, they're not used to that. So what does that mean? So for Canadians, it means you're not interested or you're not uh, uh, showing uh, respect when you are not maintaining a good eye contact. So we would do a demonstration. We we'll let them, you know, do it. And then, so are you comfortable? So how comfortable are you doing that? For some of them who are really new, uh, they might not be comfortable right away, uh, but we tell them that this is the norm in the Canadian workplace. And we tell them that, you know, you don't have to really uh, replace your culture, you know, that is what we call the assimilation. But we are just here for the cultural integration. So what else do we need to learn to our own culture and try to uh, practice in order to integrate successfully into the workplace? We also ask them, we tell them about the water cooler talk. So what is a water cooler <laughs> talk? So we tell them. Why is it called water cooler talk? And then that is a way, informal way of communicating with other staff, uh, not talking about work, but some common interests. Okay, so we tell them what are the acceptable topics to talk about and the not acceptable. So we give that as an assignment to them. So, okay, when they uh, take this uh, workshop, uh, they start it at the same time they have started their work placement. So they can practice what they have learned from the workshop. So watercolor talks, we also have the icebreaker speech, like a four to six minute uh, like introductions or talking about yourself, about hobbies or other interests, just so they can practice how to participate in meetings or in uh, group conversations in the office. As well, uh, we also uh, taught them how to do the impromptu uh, speech, uh, like speaking. We tell them about Toastmasters Club, you know, where you can, <laughs> you're asked to, you are asked a question that you don't know about, but you have to know how to compose your ideas and to... Yeah, on the on fly the, sort of conversation, idea exactly, development. Exactly, idea development. So those are the things that they would learn about communication. And then we also have to deal with the cultural building building blocks, thinking about the different building blocks uh, that could hamper their growth. Uh, like, for example, the power distance, you know, how, how, how did they deal with power? And uh, like uh, forms of belonging, right? And people give more importance to, to people than like their role or, you know, their tasks. And then uh, uncertainty avoidance. So sometimes they just avoid because they're not sure what to do instead of, you know, try to address, try to ask people how to do it properly. And why did you say that? Why did you do this? So they are learning from their experience. So we ask them also to have an audit of the culture in the workplace. So tell us about how people dress up, how they communicate, and then they would just put it into their journal and then discuss it <laughs> in the uh, workshop. We also talk about workplace safety, which is important. So we invite a resource speaker uh, from the Safe Workers of Tomorrow. They talk about hazards and dangers in the workplace, preventing injuries, how to report them, and what is ergonomics, as well as uh, fire emergencies and fire evacuation. So knowing what to do, like the process, in case uh, they encounter injuries. We also have, uh, they talk about uh, employment 
um, standards. So they know the responsibilities of the employers as well as their responsibilities and rights as well. So what is the minimum wage, the deduction? So we show them a sample of a pay stub and then show them what the deductions are uh, to expect, overtime pays, holidays, vacation times, and uh, leaves. So these are just some of the practical uh, topics that we cover alongside their uh, work placement so they can implement it, right? And as they are learning, uh, they can, it can help them develop, uh, set their learning and training goals. So what do I need to do in order to become successful with this workplace integration? And uh, they acquire these skills and develop them and be able to identify the gaps and then discuss about it and then be able to do something uh, to close those uh, gaps. We also provide uh, feedback for improvement and then ask them, how was your week? any concerns that you have at work, and then we discuss them as a group. On top of it, it could enhance uh, their mar marketability for future job search. Approximately how many clients are going through this program and how often is it offered throughout the year? It depends, right? Yeah, so yeah, go ahead. That's a good question. This year we had target uh, 50 clients and we already exceed wow. our numbers. We placed 53 clients and the year is not over yet. Yeah, the year just started. <laughs> no, uh, it's our fiscal year. Our year will finish. Yeah, so we finish in December. We placed 53 clients uh, by Christmas. Not bad. So there's a lot of demand for this uh, program then. Yeah, a lot of demand uh, and requests from employers, from big companies, uh, small companies, all kinds of companies, different sectors, because they're familiar with these programs, with this program, and they like it because they can save money and they can get access to highly skilled, talented immigrant youth. So yeah. one of the things that was mentioned was communication being one of the most significant barriers. As we continue to develop Manitoba's workspaces, what are some ways we can make it easier for newcomers to integrate within the Canadian workspace experience? They can attend different workshops about and learn about Canadian workplace culture. They can attend interview skills workshop. On this workshop, we're also sharing uh, tips about Canadian expectation, what employers are looking for. Also, on this workshop, work start workshop, Jerry, uh, Jerry mentioned great um, topics, what is covered in a workshop. And also we encourage our clients to ask questions because it's very, very important to ask questions uh, anywhere at your work, in your school. And I remember myself when I came to Canada, it was 17 years ago. I, and I work in the office and I was very afraid to ask questions because in, in my mind, I thought, okay, I will get fired. It means people will think I'm not doing my job right. And uh, we encourage our clients to, to ask questions, to raise concerns, to share your feedback, share your opinions, be respectful. And um, yeah, just as a newcomer, they, they should participate in a different trainings, attend different workshops. And as a career providers, we can develop this workshop for them and advertise and promote and kind of engage clients to participate it and just uh, keep working on their skills. Yeah, Jerry, in addition to, to that, something? because communication is a big piece of the workplace integration. And so I believe that um, in partnership with the uh, employers, uh, there should be a program, like a diversity program in place um, so that uh, both parties uh, could adjust, I mean, meet in the middle and uh, be able to have a success like a workplace integration. When we're looking at kind of heading into this next fiscal year for you, how do people take part in this workshop? Do they just kind of reach out? Is it kind of like different periods where you get groups of people before? Or like, what is that process if someone is interested? We receive emails from clients directly, like I receive 
emails from clients directly. They send me emails. Oh, hey, I'm qualified for the program. I'm interested. I would like to participate. So great. And I put you in my list. And after career coaches like Jerry send me referrals to this, okay, this client is ready right now. Resume is on file. Uh, work start eligible. Please contact this client. And I also go to our database and I select um, clients who is eligible and I do like massive selection and I see pool of candidate and I send them email and I invite them for work start information session. So it's a small session. Usually many people attending this session. It's an online session. It can be 10 people. It can be 30 people. And I'm telling them about work start program, what is all about, uh, how you can benefit from this program, because they may have questions. If I already have a job, can I participate? Or if I'm a student, can I participate? Uh, how much money and all kinds of questions and what will happen after. So they have a lot of questions. They have a lot of concerns. They never heard about it. So um, it's a small presentation. I have a few slides. And when they know about the program and they like it and... Um, so I put in, in a spreadsheet and to our hunt is start. So we see, and after we, we try to match our pool of candidates with our requests from employers. It depends on a client's qualifications, requirements and skills. Some clients will get job faster. It depends on a labor market demands. Of course. Some clients some some clients will get jobs very fast, like in a one day, in a two days. Like right now. Clients with pharmaceutical background, they in a demand. If somebody who has a bachelor or master's in a pharmacy, some years of experience, even no no years of experience, zero year, years of experience, you just completed your program, person can get job very, very quickly, like right on the next day in a couple of days, very quickly. And uh, for some clients who may be in the engineering occupation, it, it will take longer. I can say engineering, it's still demanding, but more qualifications on top. And it's more competitive compared to pharmacy assistant, for example. Where can people go to find out more information about the WorkStart program? They can go on our website. Jerry, Alina, uh, is there anything else that you would like to share? Well, uh, for me, like this WorkStart uh, program, it is a very... Um, um, good program that uh, newcomers uh, should attend, especially the youth, because uh, this really um, uncovers un opportunities for the newcomer clients, the youth clients, uh, those that are having uh, more challenges or barriers in uh, getting a job. Having this experience will also uh, provide them more opportunities uh, to get a job, uh, having higher chances, because once they have that experience being placed uh, in, in an, a Canadian organization for work experience, uh, employers are more trusting. This um, applicant has already a, uh, an experience uh, with uh, workplace integration, workplace culture. So they already have that trust this candidate can do the job because technical skills, uh, even for me, I believe it's there, you know, it's easy for them to learn that. So we're telling our clients, you know, when you're applying for a job, it's like a 40, 60% kind of consideration, 40% for your technical skills and 60% for your soft skills, like your employability skills. I just want to add, yeah, it's very interesting story. We receive a lots of requests from our past clients who got a job through WorkStart program and they got HR position and they're contacting us back and say, okay, mm -hmm. right now I'm HR person and I would like yeah. to help others and hire WorkStart clients because I got my first job through WorkStart. And I was like... coming full circle. Exactly. It's it's coming full circle and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing uh, how it's working and employers like this program and they want to give back to Manitoba Start and they want to help others because they see the value in the program and say, you know what, I, I, I got great experience. I got amazing job after this program. Let's help other candidates. Well, as uh, more and more immigrants 
comprise larger and larger percentages of the Manitoba population, you know, opportunities like this and programs are just going to continue to be important for the development of our province. And also from employer's perspective, when they hire somebody, it's, it's completely like huge risk for them if, if it's not a work start program. They just, if they hire a person for the position and if something will go wrong, they cannot call anybody. They will just have to get executive decision. Should they keep the person? Should they let this person go? But uh, through this program, if something, I don't want to say going wrong, it's just if they have so many questions, they can always come back to us and say, look, this. There's a safety net there for everyone. There is a safety. So we can follow up with a client. We can educate. We can support. We, we can encourage. We can clarify some issues. We, we can make it more safer for, for a candidate and for employers. And after go back to employers and say, look, we, we talked to a client. Everything is, is good right now. Client understood that like he or she cannot do this or should supposed to do this. So it's extra support for employers and extra support for clients as well. For anyone listening, of course, they're probably going to have more questions and, you know, hopefully we get some people inspired to reach out. And I'm excited to see, you know, what's more on the table at Manitoba's start in the future. Thank you, Ryan. Hey, thanks for listening. If you have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight, leave a comment on our social media, reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk and have yourself a good one.